found a nice little cave to do this video in. It's a little cooler in here. It's a place that some of the kings of the earth might hide in soon. This is the latest. It's headed should a man rob his neighbor through old covenant tithes. For the priesthood changed and the law also. And I have pictures of four of these what I call money laundering centers or harlot temples that other people call churches and these are located in Idaho Springs and I've probably passed about 80 of these out so far in Idaho Springs and I have more to distribute so I'm going to turn this out this way so you can see the trees and I'm going to go ahead and read this for you I just don't agree as a minister of God with some people's money changer tithe collection against God and others and I've noticed how some money changers in Idaho Springs and elsewhere have skipped around some very important jots and tittles when it comes to law also. So I'm going to help these money changers that serve mammon lose their version of Christ and Moses rejecting religion. That way these people who don't sing the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb like I do can go out of their counterfeit church businesses better for the real body of Christ's sake. And won't that do a body good? Let's take a good look at what the mediator of the new covenant says about law, according to Matthew. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And by the way, those first and second commandments in the New Testament on which hang all the law are different than any of the ten commandments that Moses once delivered. But does that mean that there's some sort of ongoing disagreement between Christ and Moses? No, it does not mean that. You see, Moses actually agrees with Christ about law. And I'm about to get to those commonly avoided jots and tittles that I mentioned earlier. Now Moses wrote, as it were, a new song, which came after the song they sang in Exodus, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. And this newer song in Deuteronomy was made as a witness against the children of Israel who broke a very old covenant about 3,000 years ago. They broke it with their King Solomon when they broke their first commandment as they went a whoring after other gods. And Moses, before that time of Solomon, said this breaking of covenant would happen. Consider this song of Moses that was made as a witness against the children of Israel and law witness against the old Levitical priesthood. Deuteronomy 31, 16 to 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day, for all the evils which they shall have wrought, and that they are turned unto other gods. 
Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 31, verses 24 to 26. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. Moreover, some things that are written in Hebrews chapter 7 line up very well with that law witness against the old priesthood. Hebrews 7 verses 11 and 12. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. And where, oh, where is that law witness against them found in superficial fluff Sunday school, where they try blending old covenant law with new covenant law? The law changed per the New Testament and was therefore not added to as other people might suggest. And I care to mention to some people that Charlton Heston in that Ten Commandments movie was only playing a movie version of Moses for a high dollar actor's pay. Consider what Paul has to say in Galatians chapter 3 about that old covenant law that came hundreds of years after the covenant that God made with Abraham. Galatians 3:17 to 19. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. And the seed, which is Christ, did come to whom the promise was made. For he himself said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And so, wherefore then serveth the law? Paul also tells us that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith, and faith cometh by hearing, just as faithful Abraham heard God's voice. But the money changers that get to go out of their counterfeit church businesses obviously have no faith because they refuse to hear the truth while they serve mammon instead of God. Galatians 3 verses 21 to 25 Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid! For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Therefore, we who are in Christ are not under the law. Neither is his body, the church, above the law. So let's be on the level here. If we truly live by his new covenant commandments of love, and our faith is not blind because it comes by hearing, then God leads us by hearing to do what's right by him and by others. 
And a real minister of him executes wrath on those who do evil, because we hate to see wicked people exploit and abuse others that we love. Romans 13, 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger, to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. If these common money changers who rob others through lies will not voluntarily submit to the truth in Christ, then let's simply call them on their fraud and stop supporting their misappropriated taxing tithe businesses. I mean, why be a slave to serve other people's antichrist corruption when we don't have to? By new covenant law. Revelation 18 verses 4 to 21. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double, according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which are, were dainty and goodly are, are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls for in one hour so great riches has come to naught and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city and they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by the reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And then I signed it St. Michael. And I've mentioned this before. It is nothing to me to have the status of being a saint. I do this because I have an indignation towards the people that hurt children in this world and exploit people and children. And so this isn't about me having a, an office status for status reasons or me getting something for this. That's what this is about. 
And this is what the saints do. The saints are not people who care to get hooked up with the IRS for a money laundering status. The IRS are law perverts. They are not justified by God to do the things that they do and distribute the money that they take from people to where they distribute it. And I've talked about this before. That's all.